Hey everybody, The Real Martian here. Well, tonight I uh, wanted to take an opportunity to respond to some subscriber questions regarding what happens in the different phases of this project. So tonight I want to go over what is phase two of the, uh, the project that we're doing here, the Martian Habitat on the Real Martian Homestead. And kind of to set it up, first I want to talk about well, actually, first what I want to say is I came home tonight and it was light and I'm so excited about that. <laughs> to those that don't live in the northern latitudes, you probably have no idea what I'm talking about uh, or the extreme southern latitudes. But uh, where we live, because uh, we are kind of up on the earth uh, quite a ways, up on the northern latitudes here, it means that we get a lot of darkness during the winter months. Nowhere close to like Alaska or the North Pole or Antarctica or anything like that. But uh, it gets pretty dark and it stays dark. So I've been going to work, it's been dark, and I've been coming home and it's dark. And today is the first day I noticed that I got home after five o'clock and it was actually still light. So I'm really excited about that. So yay, sunshine. And looking forward to those uh, days of spring ahead. Anyway, back to phase two. All right, phase two is pretty exciting to me. It's where I get to take stuff from the old country, uh, the old world, the old uh, traditions of growing things. Uh, traditional agriculture and I got to bring some rocket science into it. So automation will help us make people's lives easier if we do it right. If we do it wrong and we make it too complicated and there's too much to take care of then we'll absolutely fail. So it's going to be a balancing act. So let's talk about why we, why we care about automation. First, for those that have never done farming or ranching, uh, you may have heard this term, you may have not have. For those that own a ranch and a farm, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, I didn't understand this term, and I don't know the history and the lineage of where it came from, but I can tell you what it means to me, and that is animal husbandry, which sounds kind of weird uh, when you think about it, but once you own animals and once you have to deal with them, it actually makes complete sense. Uh, and what that means to me is when you raise animals, when you have a garden, when you're running a farm, you're essentially married to it. And it requires your attention almost all the time. And when we designed this system, we want this system, remember, to fit into a Connex box eventually. So we're going big so we can figure out all the pieces, the moving pieces that go into it so that we can figure out how to make it really, really small. And we want to be able to, to sell them to people and to help other people build them. And we want to be able to take them on mission. We are Christians and we feel strongly about helping provide sustainable food and energy to our local community and communities around the world. We feel that that's our mission. That's what God put us here to do. And we can't do that if we make a system that requires people to be with it constantly. So our solution to that is to bring some automation in. Now, that's not the only solution. You might be thinking, ah, you know, that's, that's too much. It, it could be. It very well could be if we do it wrong. But it's not the only solution. Part of all this, what you're seeing here, is using the keep it simple, stupid philosophy, uh, or keep it stupid simple is another one that I heard recently. Uh, you know who you are. Thank you. Uh, so what we want to do is keep everything that's in this building, inside of Mars Habitat here, keep it as simple as possible. We don't want a lot of moving parts, because that's more to maintain, that's more things you have to pay for, that's more things you have to take care of. So we want to keep all of our systems really, really simple. We do have to have some complexity, but we want to minimize it. So that's one way that we want to make it to where you're not married to this system. Another way is through automation. So tonight I'm going to walk around the building, I'm going to talk a few different things, or about a few different things where we want to add automation, uh, and we're going to go from there. So let's go get started. Okay, so one of the first things I want to talk about is how are we going to make everything in here talk to each other so that we can actually get information out of the systems and then be able to control everything. And what you're looking at right now at the top of the screen, let me see here. Right there. That is a wireless uh, Wi-Fi transmitter and receiver so that we are actually connected to the internet using a repeater station that I've installed from Ubiquity, Ubiquity Networks. I'll put all this on the realmartianstore.com if you want to check it all out. But um, 
it took me a while to find a, a good good brand, and I really like the ubiquity quality. And it was actually not too difficult to install. But anyway, that system up there is actually going to be the system that it connects all the way down there is where uh, its access point is at, and then we distribute it uh, through the building right so that there. Wireless system actually will allow us to have everything in here be connected to either each other wirelessly or to be connected to a local server. For our purpose, uh, and especially as we get started, everything here is going to be connected wirelessly to a local server uh, that is behind our firewall so that only we have access to it and can control it and keep it as safe as you possibly can in today's digital world. The last thing we need is some 12-year-old hacking into our system and turning all the heaters on and burning our building down. That would be an absolutely horrible thing. So uh, no offense to you 12-year-olds that can do that out there. I think if you can do that, I hope you use your skills to do good uh, rather than to do harm, because uh, those are pretty, pretty sweet skills you have. Anyway, so everything in here is going to be connected wirelessly. And uh, that's, a, that's a big deal. It'll all dump onto a server where we can store all the data and we can review it. So let's go through each of the different systems now and talk about them in detail. OK, so I'm standing next to the water heater system here. And right now, and it's an electric-based water heater. But in the future, we actually want it to be gas-based. So there's a few things that are happening in this particular location. Uh, first, we have the heating system. And this runs hydronic heating uh, that's just pipes with a bunch of water going through them. Uh, warm water in this case that's going underneath of each of the grow beds, uh, underneath each of the fish tanks, and that helps keep that water under or in those fish tanks at 54 degrees Fahrenheit. So I like to put a monitor on this to make sure I can understand the flow rate uh, because I have it sometimes where you something can go wrong, maybe it overheats and it discharges some, and you lose water pressure. So I want to be able to monitor the flow rate. So a flow sensor on this system is going to be important, as well as a temperature sensor that can tell me how hot the water is coming out of here digitally so I can keep track of it. That'll be important in the winter months, especially as temperatures start to fluctuate. I can actually get a better idea of how much heat it's taking to, to keep everything warm so in here. So right now I'm sitting on top of the digester neck. And you can't see it. I'm not going to open up tonight. But underneath here is a bunch of water filled uh, with a bunch of manure in it. And normally what would be happening in this digester is bacteria would be breaking down all of that manure or organic matter, table scraps, what have you, into methane and what's called digestate, which is an awesome fertilizer. And in order to make sure that works, you need to have enough heat in here to get it started. And that's where we failed this year. Is we got the system built too late, and by the time we got everything in the ground, we got it filled up. It was already too cold outside to get the process really going. And then I put a bunch of heat into it because the heating system that I just told you that runs heat uh, throughout the bottom of the fish tanks also runs in coils that go into the, the digester here to help keep it warm as well as take heat out of it to help heat the system, uh, the rest of the building, I mean. So what I want to do is I want to put a temperature sensor and a pH sensor down here so that I can monitor it continuously and make sure that those little bacteria are doing their job. Uh, a water sensor would probably also be good so that I can detect what level uh, of digestion is taking place uh, as the, the, the uh, density of the material will change, the water level should change as well. So uh, I'd like to put those sensors in here. Next, I want to talk to you about the electrical. So this is our electrical system. This is where everything's coming in from the main service point. Now, what we have is 40 amps coming to this building. And I've talked in previous videos if you'd like to see why. But essentially, long story short, is they would have to come put a whole new transformer in here. And that would cost a lot of cash. And we don't have that. Uh, in addition, we, we actually are happy that we only have 40 amps. It forces us to really figure out how to make this whole thing work. I digress. Uh, so what do we want to do here? I want to have a voltage meter and an amperage meter uh, a sensor, excuse me, attached to, to the main system so that I can detect exactly how much power is being used uh, at any moment in the system. And that's just going to be important for making sure that we're achieving our goals uh, and not using too much energy. The next thing is we do have the system wired for a generator. That's right here. Uh, and what I'd like to do is be able to have a system that can connect to this and monitor when power goes out and then turn the generator on. So moving the camera here, 
There's our generator. And again, I'd like to get that set up on an Arduino so that it can detect power outage, which means it'd have to have a battery, of course, uh, and then uh, be able to turn the generator on, detect generator on, flip these switches over, make sure everything's working correctly. So um, that's probably not going to happen in phase two right now because some of those components are going to be fairly expensive to buy. Uh, but nonetheless, it's what I'd like to have uh, so that everything okay. works. Here we are inside of uh, lane number two. Remember, if you haven't watched some of our other videos, you may not know this, but for those that have, eventually this lane is going to have not just the one grow bed in it, but it'll have another four grow beds to be significantly smaller. They won't be as big as this one. They'll still be as wide and as long, just not as deep. And that'll be for microgreen production. So this whole thing will be fairly high. What I'd like to put in here uh, are light sensors so I can detect the amount of light coming in both from inside or from, from outside of the building in as well as from the LED lights that are behind me. And that's going to be kind of special because what I've read so far is some of the light meters uh, and LEDs don't get along very well. So we'll have to make sure we choose the right sensor there. I'd also like to have a carbon monoxide monitor in here, a temperature sensor monitor that can detect the temperature inside of the grow uh, bed itself. Uh, and let's see here, carbon dioxide sensor to make sure there's enough CO2 inside of the building to keep everything healthy. Uh, said carbon monoxide, CO2, temperature sensor, humidity sensor. Humidity sensor is the last one that I'd like to put in right now, and that's simply to make sure we're at the right humidity, not too much. Uh, and that everything is growing, therefore, in a healthy environment to grow. Okay, so what we have going on here, this is the main pump that pumps water out of the fish tanks and into all the grow lanes and distributes that water throughout the entire system for us. I'd like to have a monitor on this to make sure that it's running, as well as a switch so I can turn it on and off in case something goes wrong. That particular switch needs to be, I think, a normally open switch because I always do want this running and it'll only be on a rare occasion that I actually need to shut it off. I've already put on an always closed switch, meaning you have to provide power to turn it on, and you end up burning out a lot of relays that way. Uh, at least I did. I think those are some counterfeit parts. In addition to monitoring the pump, what I also want to do is put a temperature sensor, a pH sensor, nitrate sensor, nitrite sensor, uh, an ammonium sensor, and a uh, dissolved oxygen, sorry, I'm doing all this from memory, uh, down into the fish tanks themselves. That'll allow us to basically monitor all the key parameters uh, that we need to to make sure that that water is key. Now, this is actually something that's going to be a, a top priority because Mrs. Martian, who is the operator of this system, um, tells me that we've lost some fish out of this particular lane. The pH, uh, and the nitrite, nitrate levels all look good, so what we fear is that the oxygen level isn't as good as it needs to be. So we're going to get those sensors in and make sure everything's working. Now, we want to be able to remember, you, you can do this different ways. You can buy cheap pH test kits, which we have, water test kits, aquarium test kits, all those kind of things. Um, I'm not saying those are bad ideas. I'm saying they don't meet our requirements. Uh, <laughs> they require you to be here to use them. Right? So we want to design a system where you don't need to be here in order to do that monitoring. So that's what we want to be able to put down into the fish tanks as well as monitoring uh, the pumps here.